Hey everybody, Dirty Dan here. So, today, as you read the title, I am finally doing a full walkthrough on how to rebuild your Tyco Power Torque. So, let's start with step one. Is it a power torque? Well, here's how to identify one. This is the engine we're going to be working on today. And um, as you can see, this is what a normal power torque should look like. There's quite a few different variants, which I'm going to go through in one moment. So, they have these three screws on the bottom, and sometimes you'll have a um one of these actual driving wheels in the center on the uh, 630s and on the gg1s but for most engines it will only be two of those so this is what a power torque will look like now there is also a motor that is known as the manua mu2 that looks like this this is not covered in the video this is something completely separate i have covered in another video which i'll link in the top right so that is an mu2 and another thing that is apparent here, this is technically a power torque, but of a different make, an earlier make. Now this is what is, or at least I know, as a transition era power torque. These are um, a bit different. As you can see, there's only one screw, and normally only in the front truck for some reason. And this is a 630, so it has three driving axles. Um, some of these don't have that. And it has two clips on either end. These are a bit different, but you should be able to work on these the same as a normal power torque. Now, we'll go through all of the different styles of hangers first, because these trucks are held in different with each engine. And because they made so many different engines that had this motor, there's a lot of different variants. So, first we'll cover the power torque F units. As you can see, this one has um, two clips here and here. And these just snap out like that. That's it. So those are easy to work with. Um, I believe the um, the shark noses are literally identical. They have the exact same truck styling. So these are the same process. The uh, SD24s, which are a, li a little bit less uncovered um, and don't get as much attention as the normal engines, have a clip here and have a clip here. And these are pretty simple and straightforward. All you have to do is get behind those clips, just gently pry them out on both sides, and they should pop right out. And on the 630s, the, stand, the process is pretty much the same. They have a clip there and a clip there. And uh, then we go to the GG1. The GG1, pretty much similar to the F unit in that it has the same hanger. It has a clip here and a clip here. And we have the GP20 which has the same as the F unit, like most of them, has a clip here and a clip here. The C430s also have that same design as just like the GP20s have a clip here and a clip here. And that is all of the different versions of the hangers you'll encounter while working on these. The, um, the F units and the ones that have this style of hanger are the easiest to remove, and I'll show you why. As you just watched me do this a second ago, and you can see how easily they snap back into place. So now we can actually start into the disassembly. What you're going to want for disassembling these is about just two screwdrivers. And with two screwdrivers, you'll honestly be pretty good. You will want a soldering iron in case some of the wires do come off. So I would have one of those handy. Um, you can see I have a very small Phillips head screwdriver and a flathead screwdriver. Preferably a small one too. And I just like to have a set of pliers handy. So those are always nice to have. So the first thing we're going to do is we're actually gonna tear apart the bottom plate here. So what we wanna start with, is we're gonna unscrew all these screws. It does not matter the order. And these come out pretty easy. Um, make sure that you're setting the locomotive down and you're not pressing down on it or anything. And you know, you're not gonna break anything while it's sitting there because they do have the horns on top. If yours has horns on the top, be careful and remove those first so those get don't get broken. And we'll uh, just get this cover plate off, and there you go. Make sure you don't lose those screws. It does not matter. The screws in all of these are exactly the same, so you can interchange them. Now, as you can see, we've already got these wheels coming out. All you've got to do to take the wheels out now is just pull them right off. Oh, some of them are a little stuck. There we go. Just had to pop out. 
but you have to be really careful when working on stuff like this because if you're not you're gonna break stuff i've seen i've seen it happen many times i've even watched people break stuff on camera it's common so just be careful all right now we have the entire bottom piece of the truck disassembled and we're ready to take the motor out so as i demonstrated before all you want to do is take your flathead screwdriver stick it up there it should pop right out boom just like that now since this has the headlight and the wires going to the rear truck, with this one, we're going to pop the weight out. Now, the weights are something I'm not going to completely cover, but they do have two tabs, and you want to be careful when you stick this underneath the shell, go from underneath, because you're going to scratch the paint if you try ripping it out. Never go like this and try to pull the shell apart, unless it's a dire situation and you can't get it out. But I highly recommend just taking your time and you will get it out. Because if you try to do that, you're going to end up either cracking the shell, messing up the paint, a various things that could happen. And it's not worth the time. So what you want to do, take the screwdriver and just get it behind there. And these F unit weights seem to be a bit more stubborn than most. And you're going to hear a pop when this um, should go like this. And then once you get it underneath there, yeah, you can slide it underneath and it should be fine. Just got to take your time. Just slowly pry up on each one of these. There you go. Don't want to crack the shell. There we go. So now we got to do it to the other side. Got to get behind there. Pry up. Pry up on this. Just take it nice and slow. And believe me, you'll get there. It may seem a little... Yeah, actually, yeah, you know what you can see right there? I kind of messed up the shell, but that's nothing too serious. I can just push that right back down. But this engine isn't in particularly good shape anyways. Um, but yeah, see, exactly. That's what, that's what Sometimes that just happens, but you can normally pretty much flatten the plastic back out. I know I was warning everybody about not doing that, but it happens. So don't feel bad if you do that. I've worked on a million power torques and I never get it right perfect all the time. So. Ah, there we go. See, that's what you want to hear. So now we want to just pop it out. And there it goes. Weight is out. So now this is one of the problems with these. These lights never like to come out and you're almost always going to break this post and I still don't have an exact way to get these out. But one of the things I'll typically do is bend this copper plate down and that should allow you to slide this off like that. And see, I didn't break the post. You almost always break the post. And that will open up these little pieces. And when you go put, the ba put this back in, just bend this back up and you'll be good to go. Because these fingers here dig into that plastic shaft. And when you try to remove it by just like twisting it, it always breaks the shaft. So there's a little tip. All right. So now we have our power torque separated from the actual engine. And what we want to do now is remove the hanger. Because you can see the hangers in the way of getting all access to the motor pieces. So... All you want to do is, these hangers are pretty easy to disassemble. You can just kind of push behind here. And it normally snaps apart, but this one's being a little stubborn. There we go. And there we go. So we got the first piece off. And then we'll get this piece off. Now, you want to be careful and take your time with these. And actually, I'm going to pry from the top here. Because sometimes it can break the motor lip. And it, it'll actually, you want to be careful. There we go. See, that's a little risky what I just did there. If you could find a better way to do that, I recommend it because you can break this lip sometimes if it's corroded enough or if it's not strong enough and well made. So, and believe it or not, there's a way to get these off without even having to um, take the wires off. Boom, you see it like that, it just slides right off. So, both hangers, boom, hangers off. So, we've now got it down to the motor block itself. This is where things get tricky. Motors, these these gears are very finicky. And if you bend this the wrong way, you won't be able to get this back together. The thing you want to start with is go underneath here with a screwdriver and gently pry. Don't manhandle it because you're going to mess up that gear. Once you get it free, pull it right off. Your gear should be good. 
And now it's removing these gears. Now, if they're seized, put oil on them and work them a little bit. Do not try to spin it by this gear because that can break this post. I've seen it happen. It's not worth it. And as you can see, these gears do spin, but I'm just gonna spin them a little bit. And I might even oil up this shaft because these are a little sticky, but just like that, and these should come off. Do not pry from the side. Don't try to pry this gear off. It breaks this post. I, I've seen it happen so many times. But you really just want to be pulling straight up with this because that is guaranteed won't break the post. And it's basically like a one in a thousand chance that you will break this. But I have seen it happen. So that's the best way to remove that gear. And then this one should come right off. Lift straight up. These can be a little stubborn. But normally, just a bit of twisting. Just get it from both sides, lift straight up. And there it is. So now we've got all the gears off the block. Um, so now we're going to the brushes and such. So there is different generations of power torques. There will be some that have this gear being made of white nylon. And um, those are that's a lot later generation. This is an early one. I think this is actually one of the very first versions that they had produced. This one doesn't even have vent holes. These all are very similar and they follow a similar, you know, um, sort of practice, but they, um, they all come apart very similarly. With later engines, you will find that the brush plates are quite different. And the only difference with the later ones is that these plates don't clip off. They actually slide out and I may actually um, include a section in this video where I go over that, but I likely won't because it's it's a pretty minuscule detail, but yeah, they follow about the same practice. So what we're gonna do here is we wanna remove these two screws. Make sure you're holding the motor block by the top and the bottom, because if you set it down, you have a good chance of pushing that post on the other side and breaking it, and you really don't wanna do that. And you can see I'm putting pressure on this plate with my finger and that's because there's brushes and springs behind here and if you let go sometimes they will spring right off and you really don't want that happening because you'll lose your brush springs and now you need a parts donor so now we are ready to take this guy apart and just lift this gently off and there you go as you can see the brushes and springs did kind of fly off into some different directions but that's going to happen sometimes there we go there's one brush we're gonna have to find out where the other spring went. And there it goes, it went. Honestly, typically they don't spring out like that. In some cases like this one, they will do that though. I think it's more about the motor. The motor shaft does like to spring out sometimes. And you can even see with this one, the um, the, armature, the commentator's not in bad shape. So so here's your brushes. Don't lose these. These are kind of, kind of important, just a, just a tad important. And you'll also see these little copper springs Never grab them with tweezers because you'll lose them, guarantee it. I like to put them on the end of a screwdriver to hold them, just to be safe. And my camera won't focus, oh, no, there it is. So what I like to do is put these in a little container so I don't lose them. And I'll show you guys how to clean those later on in the video. And honestly, with this, it's probably just a better idea to just tap that out. It's a good way to get them out. So you're at this step, you've got the motor completely disassembled now. We have a, well, actually we gotta take the brush plate apart, but that's next. So put the lid on here and set these guys off to the side for right now. And if your armature hasn't come off by now, um, you should be able to just pull it right out. If these magnets fall out, you will have to glue those back in, but they typically are still in. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't bother with any of this in here. It's not worth your time trying to disassemble. It's just kind of pointless, so. Now we have the motor block disassembled. All right, so the next task at hand is disassembling the um, brush plate, which actually needs to be disassembled, which not a lot of people realize. So what we've got to do is you need to be careful with these plastic clips because they will break if you put too much pressure on them. What I like to do is try to pry this up from one side at a time, and it'll kind of work its way out in a way. All you have to do is get one side up, and then you're good to go. It's kind of hard to do, though, sometimes. Sometimes you got to use your fingernail and such, but 
this is much easier when you don't have to look through the camera. That's, I'm actually working through the camera, so it's a little, a little difficult. But you really just want to get the screwdriver behind that plate and just kind of pry it up. This can be a little hard to do. Actually, let's try getting it from the other side. Ah, this one's pretty stubborn. And sometimes when they're this stubborn, I usually like to take a knife and just get behind them. There we go. And that'll help, help kind of push them off. There we go, okay. And after enough prying, you'll usually get them off. These little inserts will come out sometimes, but you pretty much just wanna put those back in because you don't need to have those out. All right, now we'll get to the other one. This one should come off a little easier. Yeah, that one was pretty straightforward. So there we go. Now we have it completely disassembled. So on to the cleaning phase. So we'll set our brush plate off to the side now. Also make sure you're not losing any parts here. So believe it or not, there is actually some cleaning you need to do here with these uh, pieces. And actually now, as you can see, this wire is pretty loose. So we're gonna actually have to re-solder that. I'm gonna fire up the old soldering iron. So see how this this is just bending come very freely on the end of here? You don't want that. That's gonna, and there it go, just snapped. So that's what'll happen on these after years of wear. And uh, I'll actually show you guys how to re-solder these. So what you're gonna do, re-strip the wire. Actually, I want to strip it farther on the end. So, there we go. And there we go. Twist it together so this doesn't get all messed up. We're gonna get our flux. And soldering iron is warmed up already. So we'll throw a bit of flux on the end here. Just like that. And now we're good. Get some solder, get my soldering iron. And you just want to uh, tin the end of the lead there, and you'll be good to go. And um, since this wire is already pretty much held up on its own, we can just use some pliers and solder this guy right back on. I'm going to try to get it in frame here. And that's, oh, <laughs> going to hold it for a little longer. And there it is. And no. Yeah, this solder is a little hot. And yes, I did just grab that with my hands. What we want to do is we're going to have to let this sit for a while. Okay. <laughs> a little blow sometimes, and that'll help it settle. And there we go. Our new lead is soldered on. Actually, that should be bent like that. There we go. So now. These actually need cleaned on the end here. So what we're gonna do, get a Q-tip, it's my propyl alcohol. That's the way I like to clean these. What we're gonna do is just swap the end of this, just clean off the end here. Make sure we're getting good contact with the brushes. There we go. And then we wanna clean this guy. And there we go. So those are now clean and we're ready to move on to the rest of the engine here. So let me move the engine itself out of the way. We can just set that down. So now let's move on to the commutator. So with this one, this commutator isn't too bad. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean this with isopropyl alcohol on a Q-tip. This one does not need polished or resurfaced. This one will be fine. But in most cases, you will have to take normally a Dremel is what I like to use is uh and just go around with some polishing compound and clean it wipe it off with a rag and you'll be good to go but i'll show you guys how i clean these 
with isopropyl alcohol because it's a lot easier that way and this one really doesn't need it so all you want to do is just get the q-tip and uh, maybe this one wouldn't even benefit from a polish but and actually it would be a good idea to just do that anyway but this is a good demonstration as to you know if it if it doesn't have too much wear and if you don't have a polishing wheel this is what i recommend just going around in circles and you'll get it eventually another important step is while you have this apart is you want to take a screwdriver or something and clean out between the pleats of the commutator here and get any little loose debris that might be in there because that can short your motor and really mess it up so as you can see we've got that done now so i think we're actually going to polish this one so i'm going to need to get my dremel out to get some polishing compound i was hoping i wouldn't have to do it on this one but looks like we're gonna have to do it anyway so well it'll be a good demonstration so if you do not have a dremel don't fret you can usually go without one but it's very nice to have especially if you're a pretty avid modeler so what i'm gonna do is i've got my dremel and my polishing wheel put it on some polish there we go so now what we want to do is you always want to hold the commutator or armature by these three pieces here you don't need a super high amount of speed you just want to work your way around and then move to the next one Okay, and that's all. So, what we're gonna do now is take another Q-tip. Now we can clean off the excess polishing residue. Just wanna go around with the Q-tip and just clean this guy off here. It's getting up all that debris and dust, and there you go. So, that should run forever now. It will need serviced in the future again, but should be fine. So now we have a lot of you know miscellaneous pieces there is one more thing we do need to clean here it's this brush plate and this is something you can clean with isopropyl alcohol because you have to clean out the brush recesses to make sure that they get good contact so what you want to do is get some isopropyl alcohol and i spilled it everywhere because of course i did and then you just want to stick this guy in there twist it around and it's not getting all the way in there pull off some of that and that should help Get in there a little better. Oh, well, that came out. Sometimes it's just better to hold these with your hand. And this is what I've found is the best way to clean these out. Um, because if you don't clean them out, your brushes won't get good contact and you may have to disassemble it again. Or like, that's, that's typically sometimes when you see when you're going to have to like tap something to get it running. Not when it has to do with the track. If you do, the brushes don't actually have good contact with the stuff in here, then you're going to have problems. So, just clean that guy out. And then, of course, that one came out too. So, we'll just have to twist that around in there. And there we go. Those are as clean as those are going to get. Now, the rest of everything here can all be cleaned with hot soapy water. So, let me show you guys how I go about that. Okay, so now we've moved over to the tub of water here. And what I always like to start with is the motor block. Now with the motor block, there's some special processes that you wanna take before cleaning this guy. I like to hit it with a little degreaser. I use super clean because this stuff works really well. Spray it with that. And be careful when you're using this stuff because it can mess up your hands. And I usually take a stiffer bristled brush and go around and just brush around that super clean. And be mindful of the gear axles on the other side of the motor. You really don't want to be hitting those 
because those can get knocked off and broken if you're not careful. That's probably good there. And as you can see, motor block's a little cleaner. Now we want to hit it with the dish soap. And yes, I, I use dish soap. It seems to work just fine for most everything. I've been using it for years now. I want to make sure to get into all those little recesses, but still be mindful of those gear axles. And there we go, motor's nice and clean. Now, depending on how hot your water is, um, this stuff's pretty warm, so I can just let these parts air dry. But if your water's not as warm, you wanna take like a hair dryer or something and air dry them, depending on how you want to, uh, how quickly you would like to assemble the engine. So, as you can see, our motor block's much cleaner now. So, now we're basically just gonna repeat the same process for all the parts. Um, not, I will show you guys all of the parts that you want to clean, like the gear hangers. You want to get your ac or wheels. Oh, and I drop one on the floor. There it is. Just throw those guys in there. All of your gears. And your main truck cover. Make sure you don't bring any of the screws with it. And those are all the parts you want to clean in the water. Um, make sure you repeat the same process. I wouldn't use degreaser for any of these unless they're super greasy. Um, especially nothing cosmetic that can mess it up. But I'm going to repeat the process for all these parts. And then I'll get back to you guys when we're ready to reassemble everything. Alrighty, now that all our parts are clean, there is actually a few more things that need to get done before we do reassemble this guy. So, one of the big things is we need to put some new traction tires on this. So that's what we're going to start with. Um, removing the old traction tires is pretty simple. Uh, all you got to do is just pry them right out. And this is a pretty standard process with these. Now, I have not found an exact um, good distributor for Tyco traction tires yet. But I just use some of these gum bands. Uh, I will try to find somewhere I can... I'm, I'm still looking for a good source for them. So... But if you can find them, this is how to replace them. So you just pry those guys out. And then all you want to do is just put your finger on this guy. Make sure you don't twist these while you're putting them in. And then just run the screwdriver around the edge like that. And then you should be good to go. You want to make sure these are even on the wheels like that. So when you do go to run this, it won't, you know, like bounce or like rattle along the tracks. I see that happen pretty often. And there's the other one. So pretty simple. And there we go. So now we actually need to clean the wheels here. And um, I will show the process for how to remove the rear truck and clean the wheels there too at the end here. But for cleaning these, there's quite a few different methods you can use. Um, you can use sandpaper, Scotch-Brite. I know that there's um, certain products you can use to clean these. If they're not dirty enough, isopropyl alcohol, and if you have nothing else, um, you know, Q-tips and stuff like that. But I highly recommend the same process I did with the, the Dremel on the commutator. I'm just going to use that and polish these guys because that's typically my process. And now that I'm looking at these, these actually have some gunk on the axles, which I need to remove because... If you don't remove that, these won't contact the motor block correctly and get good contact there. So if your axles aren't completely clean, well, clean them like this. I usually just kind of roll them along as I use a Q-tip and just, yeah, it's a pr pretty simple process. And this will help these guys get good contact.
And there you go. Axles are much more clean now. Those are about as good as they're going to get. So for the purpose of this video, actually, you know what? I'm going to use the scotch Bright. Now, this stuff isn't the best, but you can use it. Uh, if I can find out where I put mine. Oh, boy. One moment. I know I have some around here somewhere. I would assume it's in here somewhere. Possibly. No. There it is. So, this stuff is like the dollar store stuff. I would recommend using the name brand stuff. It's a lot better. But the dollar store stuff works. So what you want to do, one thing you never want to use is steel wool. That will get that will get everywhere and it will get in your motor and it will ruin everything. So don't do that. So you just take the scotch Bright, wrap it around the wheel and just twist it like this for a little while. And this is almost like polishing them. You can already see it's starting to shine them up. Now this isn't the best method, but this will get you by if you have nothing else. And you can also maybe use this on the commutator. I wouldn't, but if you are desperate, then yes, it may work. And as you can see, that wheel is actually pretty clean. So it's just a little tarnished, but I'm going to hit it for a little longer with this. But I would highly recommend using the name brand stuff. This stuff really isn't that great. And that's about as good as that's going to get. So you'll make sure you blow off all the little excess uh, hairs and such off of there. And then now we want to do the other one. With this one, I'll actually use the Dremel. So you guys can see the Dremel works a lot better. Um, let me actually got a little stuck here. Get some polishing compound on here. Now what we're going to do is just make our way around the wheel. There we go. So as you can see, the Dremel does work a lot better. Let me wipe off the excess polishing compound. But both of them will work. I can show you guys what they look like side by side now. And you can see the polishing compound or the polishing wheel leaves a actual polished surface and the scotch Bright will leave a clean surface. So you can kind of see, you know, the difference there. This will work. scotch Bright does work, but I would recommend a Dremel if you have one. So like I said, sandpaper, um, I think Walter's Bright Boy, I think somebody I know uses one and they seem to work good. So there's a lot of different things you can use to clean these, but that's just two of the methods I know. I always use the polishing wheel. So and there we go. So I think that's everything we need to do before we reassemble this thing. Um, yeah, so we are ready to reassemble. So what we're gonna start with is we're gonna get the engine over here, get to our um, brush plate, and we are going to reassemble the brush plate itself. And make sure you install the brush plates correctly on the plate itself. So what you wanna do is just take these guys and just snap them right into place, maybe. Actually, it'd probably be easier if I just use the screwdriver. Let me move the motor block out of the way. These wheels. Actually, you know what? So, these are kind of... The, they, these can be a little tricky to install, but there we go. And then once you get to this point where you've got one of them underneath, you can just take a screwdriver and just push the other side down. Maybe. Actually, you know what? I'm going to pry this guy out a little bit. There we go. And now it should look like that. 
both clips should be installed and sometimes I'll even hit them with the pliers just to make sure that that's in there good. So now we need to install the other one. We'll go like that. Stick it underneath one of them. And use the screwdriver to push it down. I'm going to set this down. And there we go. So now these are reinstalled. Hit it with some pliers. Make sure these are pretty good on there. Brush plate is reassembled. Now, I'm actually going to get out all of our lubricants. There's another lubricant that you guys are probably not going to expect. But it seems to work well for one specific application on these. I will show you. Okay, that's where we want to be. So, the Bell 106 and some of the Bell 107, as well as a bit of Vaseline. You can kind of see. So, this stuff works good, and I will show you guys exactly what it works good for once we get there. So, what we're going to start with is we're going to reassemble the hardest part, which at least I think is the hardest part to reassemble. Get the motor block ready. Get our brushes and springs. It seems they've gotten a bit tangled. Gonna have to untangle those. There they go. And now, here's how this goes. So this is a pretty delicate process here. What we wanna do, is we wanna get this brush plate, if the camera will focus, and it's not going to, so of course, we wanna get the springs, get them on our screwdriver, Put the springs in, like that. If this would focus on the brush plate, please. There we go. Go to get the other one here. Boom. Now we're gonna take some tweezers and use those to install our brushes. Well. Pretty much set them on top of here. There's one, there's the other one. You want them essentially resting on top of these springs here. One thing that's important that you really want to do is you want to take your oil and you want to put a little drop right on that bearing right there. Boom, done. Now, time to take our armature. We're gonna set this guy right on top. Boom, snap that in. Now your brush should be seated, twist it a little bit. And now you wanna flip it up while keeping pressure on it. Make sure it's still pressed in. And then we're gonna take this and we're gonna put it into the motor block. And then make sure you've got it aligned with the bearing. Sort of. Boom. The motor is together. Then you want to install your screws. Watch the axles on the other side for the gears. Once you've got one screw installed, you can let off the pressure there. And that's it. That is how I assemble them, and it seems to work quite well. Put our other screw in. Now comes the fun part. We get to assemble the gears. Now, get our oil again. Oil this bearing. Oil this. Oil this guy, and oil this guy. Now we'll install our gears. Make sure you've got the one that has nothing on the top of it that has a flat top. You want that one right here. And then there's one with a little bump on it that typically sometimes has grease stuck on it. It's always this one. That one should go right on there. The main thing about these gears is you want the... Um, you want the teeth clean. This, that won't matter. That won't affect anything. Now we want to take our big gear. 
Make sure that guy's all clean. You can see how nice and clean the teeth are. I'm gonna just press that down gently. Just kind of twist it into place. And there it is. And now the last gear. Just wanna assemble this guy. And you can usually just press it on with your finger. And that's it, folks. That is all the gears reassembled. And then we're gonna put some grease on these, actually. So, there we go. Uh, and then I would should mention, here's a tip. If this silver gear right here is slipping, super glue or Loctite, like red Loctite, and you wanna let that sit for a day, that thing won't move ever again. I highly recommend super glue, though. That stuff's much better. So, now, this is something I didn't know I, you were supposed to do before, but I ended up finding out. And this seems to help these engines. So you don't want a ton of grease here. Just want to put a little bit. There, that's plenty. And we're going to put some here. Put some here. And then we're going to also drop a bit of oil on there to help the grease and thin it out just a tad. Then sometimes you can even take like a pick or something and, you know, kind of mix it around a little bit and sometimes even spin the gears. I'll run this around the end of the gear. It will eventually mix all together. You just have to run these guys for a while. That's good enough. So, now we can put the hanger back on. So, you remember I got that Vaseline earlier? Well, here's what it's for. So, I'm gonna take that out, open it up, and we're gonna get, actually, I'm gonna just use my knife for this. So, you'll notice on either side, you have this here and that here for the hanger. What we're gonna do, we're gonna take a little glob of uh, Vaseline just going to put some on either side. And believe it or not, this tends to help the engines a lot with the hangers. I don't know why it helps so much, but it seems to improve how they run. I, I don't know why, but th this is something I always do. Just rub it on either side. Now we can reinstall our hanger. Uh, let me wipe this off. There we go. And you and you got to make sure that you put the top ring on first. Get these guys straightened out. Actually, it should go like this. Slide it over. Maybe there we go. Should look like that. Slide the next one over. Boom. And then we can just snap this guy on. Boom. Then we're going to take our second piece and snap it back together. Make sure it still bends. Move this around a bit. And there we go. Now we're ready to reinstall the motor back into the engine. And then we can put our wheels. And then we just got to clean the rear wheels and then we're done. So I'm going to flip this guy back, out, back over. First thing we need to do is reinstall the light. Which, as I said before, I'm actually going to bend this out before I put it in there because that'll help it. There we go. Just set the motor in there so I have enough wire. And then we'll just push that light back down in there with my pliers. And there we go. Now, something important you have to note when installing this motor is you want this side, not this side. You see how this has a bigger end on it? You want this side facing forwards, always. We'll just push this guy back in. It should snap right into place. Go to start with one side. And 
there we go, back in place. We are back in business. All right, and then we're gonna take our oil, kind of like that, put a little bit of, like just a very minuscule amount on these axle slots because these pick up power and you really don't want too much oil where there's gonna be, you know, power going through. So as you can see, I've put barely any on there, but it'll work its way around. As my only, only put as much as you need. Put these wheels back in. This goes goes like that. Boom. And then our truck cover. There it is. Goes like that. Make sure you have it facing the right way. Get our screwdrivers. We're gonna reinstall these screws unfortunately we're not quite done yet because we need to re we need to take apart the rear truck now the rear truck is but is a lot more simple and with this we're gonna go easy on um... all right that's our motor reassembled completely right there so that's done so what we're gonna do next is we have to disassemble this rear truck here now Depending on what you're what you're looking for, if you're looking for a full restoration on one of these, you want to take this whole thing apart and repeat basically the same process with this, clean everything in soapy water. I'm going to show you guys how to do a quick method here that will basically just clean all the moving parts. We're just going to remove this rear truck cover. This one's a little stubborn. There we go. I'm going to unscrew that a little more. There we go, set this guy off to the side. Now we've got these wheels. So we're gonna go through here with a Q-tip. Gotta get this guy in perfect shape for cleaning the axle slots. And uh, we're gonna put some isopropyl alcohol in there. And what we're gonna do is watch and make sure you don't get any isopropyl alcohol on the shell. We're just gonna sit that guy in the axle slots and clean all of the axle slots and get all of the gunk and debris out of there. As you can see, just as I'm doing right now. And there we go. So that's ready to go. And um, what we're gonna do with these wheels is, first of all, I'm gonna get the polishing wheel out. And like this is the same process as cleaning the wheels on the front truck, but we're gonna just hit it with the polishing wheel real quick. And there we go. Now with these, I'm gonna get a paper towel and put some isopropyl alcohol on it. And we're gonna clean these guys on both sides with this. So we'll take our wheel, clean the axle first, make sure we get all that crap off of there. We're probably gonna have to hit that with a Q-tip. Want to clean the dummy wheel too, the plastic one on that side, because that one can sometimes be a little caked with crap. All right, that's good. So we'll have to clean the uh, axle with a Q-tip on that one. Clean this one. There we go. It's looking pretty good. Now what we're gonna do, I've cleaned up all the wheels, got our oil, put a little bit in there, we'll put some in the center, and then we'll take our wheels, make sure they're on the right side, by the way, put them like that, and like that. Reassemble this.
There we go. Put this one back on. And then there we go. And since we've had our weight on or not installed this whole thing, we'll put this guy back in. Should go right back in. Push the shell. There we go. And that's it. Let's give this thing a test. All right. Now it's the moment of truth. If you've done everything correctly, your Tyco Power Torque should do something like this. There you go. You can see it both runs in both directions. We'll hook it up to a little train. You always want to make sure these guys can actually pull. And there it goes. So, I hope you folks found this helpful. And, um... If your engine doesn't run, just run back through all the steps, and you should be able to fix what's ever wrong. And um, I should warn you, when you first run in your power torque, it may give you some trouble, might be a little rough, but give it some run time, and it should smooth out. Normally, the brushes just need to seat, and they need to get themselves properly adjusted to the commutator after you've especially resurfaced it like I did. But if you've done everything right, it should run just like this. So, there it is. I hope you folks found this uh, useful. If um, you're having any troubles, uh, just let me know uh, down in the comments. And if you have any other tips that would be useful, leave them down in the comments. So, thank you folks for watching, and I'll see you next time.